Good afternoon, everyone. If we can get everyone's attention, we're ready to get underway. If I'd known this was going to be this many people, I think we would have stayed outside. But uh, the rain was getting a little threatening, so we thought it uh, best to bring, uh, bring this uh, uh, ceremony inside. I truly do appreciate everyone uh, being here today uh, as part of our participation in National Gun Violence Awareness Day. Uh, today is part of the Wear Orange campaign. Orange is the color that hunters wear to warn other hunters to not shoot them. And uh, so we symbolically wear orange today as part of the Wear Orange campaign. Um, today, over 200 mayors across the country will issue proclamations in their cities recognizing today as Gun Violence Awareness Day. So uh, I truly do appreciate everyone that's turned out, and we have uh, several folks here that I'd like to uh, give the opportunity uh, to speak. Um, certainly, I think here in the city of Brockton and uh, with the Brockton Police Department, uh, we pride ourselves and, and, uh, on cooperation with other law enforcement agencies, federal, state, county, and local, and that we really do believe that uh, the most effective strategy is sharing resources and identifying targets of mutual interest and, and uh, working together. And I think that's no better symbolized than by uh, our relationship with uh, Plymouth County District Attorney Tim Cruz and all the people that work with him. The state troopers assigned to the district attorney uh, work side by side uh, with Brockton Police Detectives every day. They're here in the city every day, and we uh, appreciate what they do for us. And uh, the district attorney could not be here, but uh, we did just as well. We've got the first assistant district attorney and uh, retired Judge uh, Rick Savignano to join us. So, Judge. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, first of all, I want to thank you for uh, extending the invitation to members of our office uh, to join you here today on this very important and consequential uh, month ahead, uh, where we where you are and we are all raising awareness of the impact of, of gun violence on our communities. The folks who work in our office, the prosecutors, the victim advocates, uh, the state police, and all the police officers that we work with know very well. Um, the impact that gun violence has on families, on communities, uh, and on the peace and well-being uh, of, of how our children are raised in these communities. I live here in Brockton. I know acutely well uh, the impact that it has in our community, uh, as do uh, everyone on our staff. And I want to take this opportunity on behalf of District Attorney Tim Cruz, who, as the mayor uh, has pointed out, had a family obligation today. I'm joined here today by uh, probably over 20 of my colleagues from the district attorney's office who are each and every day committed seven days a week uh, to uh, investigating and vigorously prosecuting crimes of violence, crimes that involve handguns, uh, and we are acutely aware of that issue. We work very closely with the mayor's office, with the Brockton Police Department, and all the other resources in this community. Um, and I join each and every one of you today in proudly wearing orange. Uh, and uh, we should not just wear orange today, but in our hearts, in our minds every day, we should be committed to this issue and care passionately about it. I know that my colleagues in the district attorney's office do, and I want to take this opportunity, as the mayor has just done, to reiterate, I want to commend all of my colleagues. They do a magnificent job of prosecuting the cases that come to us uh, in this community and throughout Plymouth County. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I became involved in the Wear Orange <clears throat> campaign and Gun Violence Awareness Day uh, about three years ago uh, th when I uh, joined a group of mayors from across the country called Mayors Against Illegal Guns. And we advocate for common sense gun laws. We don't debate the Second Amendment. I personally support the Second Amendment. I used to have a license to carry at one time in my life. However, that's not the challenge. The challenge is our illegal crime guns that are on the streets of our cities that are being used by criminals to perpetrate crime. And that's what we're after. And the fact of the matter is that there are just far too many guns on the streets of our city and of all cities across the country. Um, here in Massachusetts, I think we're fortunate that 
we probably have some of the best gun laws in the country. Unfortunately, we're boarded by states who don't. And we know that some of these common sense gun laws really need to be enacted at the national level to be effective. However, in the meantime, I think that we are working closely with our uh, legislators and the state leaders to continue to do what we can to make the streets of our city safer. And I am just uh, really pleased and honored uh, that uh, State Representative Claire Cronin is here with us today. Uh, Representative Cronin is the chair of the House Judiciary Committee. She was instrumental uh, in the passage uh, recently of the crime, legis crime reform legislation and uh, just last week enacted one of those pieces of common sense uh, gun legislation that we're looking for. Uh, so I would like to first thank Representative Cronin. <laughs> and invite, invite you up to make some remarks. Thank you very much. It is my pleasure to be here. Last week in the House of Representatives, we passed um, a very common sense piece of legislation. It's, some of you have probably heard the term. It's called an ERPO piece of legislation. It's for extreme risk protection orders. And this piece of legislation builds on what we already did in the state legislature in 2013. Massachusetts enacted one of the strictest but most common sense gun laws in the country. As a result of that, Massachusetts has the lowest number of gun deaths in the whole nation. Uh, but there was still more to be done. And while we are always very cognizant of the Second Amendment and the right for people to bear arms and the right to due process, we know that we are in a crisis oftentimes. So this piece of legislation allows family members or roommates to go to the court and seek an order if they believe that someone in their home is a danger to themselves or a danger to others. And it allows the judge to hear the evidence and to remove the guns from those homes if it's necessary. Uh, this is a piece of legislation that we think will also have a very, very deep impact on our veterans. Uh, veterans have some of the highest suicide rates in the nation. And the weapon of choice for most veterans when they choose to take their life is a gun, uh, so the veterans groups are very happy with this. But we have preserved due process. There's a right to a hearing, there's a right to an appeal. And we hope that as we build upon what we've already done, that this will help save lives in the Commonwealth and keep us on top in the nation and the amount of gun deaths. Uh, the bill will be taken up in the Senate next week, and I'm sure it will also have a very similar strong uh, bipartisan vote on that. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. I want to thank our law enforcement officers in particular who put their lives on the line every day in this city. I mean, we have had uh, some recent shootings that you are all aware of. Uh, they are on the front lines and doing all that they can to protect us. So I would just ask that if you meet one of our officers, uh, in the course of your business, thank them for all they do. And thank you for being here. Thank you, Representative Cronin. I should mention that as part of the, the, the Wear Orange uh, recognition uh, today, that tonight, uh, City Hall will be illuminated in orange light tonight as part of that. Uh, so. We're going to see how it looks. We've installed the orange lights that the color of a lot of the building of the brick is close to orange. So we'll see how it looks. But we, we have installed orange lighting for tonight, exterior lighting to shine on City Hall. So anyone that drives by City Hall tonight will see City Hall as a symbol uh, of our commitment to the Wear Orange campaign. Uh, I would also like to uh, thank uh, Brockton Police Chief John Crowley for being here with us uh, as part of uh, today's awareness. And uh, from the Brockton Police Department, uh, as part of tied to today's event, tomorrow from 10 to 2, the city will be conducting a gun buyback. So tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., uh, we will be exchanging supermarket gift cards for working handguns. 
This will be our fourth gun buyback. Uh, we know that it's a very complex strategy to a, a, attacking this issue of illegal guns, but I do sincerely believe that every time we take 15 or 20 working handguns off the streets of the city, the city is a safer place. Uh, so I'd like to invite uh, Lieutenant Dick Linehan up, uh, who's overseeing tomorrow's uh, gun buyback for the police department, and have him fill you in on the details. Good afternoon. I liked when they were talking about the Second Amendment and we have the right to bear arms. However, if you have any weapons at a home that are collecting dust, that's taken up space, that could become a hazard to anyone at home or someone coming into your home, bring them tomorrow at the New Life Temple of Holiness, 15 Nelson Street. And for the handguns, we'll make that exchange. Since the May of 2016, we've taken in 51 weapons. So tomorrow will be the fourth out of the three take backs, 51 weapons. Tomorrow I'm hoping that we get 16 to 20. Okay, that's all I have, thank you. Thank you, and uh, we have conducted these buybacks at, at uh, primarily church locations. We also did one at the Council on Aging that was uh, very successful because we know that seniors who have guns in their home can often be a target uh, for those who are looking to uh, acquire a gun illegally. And uh, so it's, it, this really is a multifaceted effort. I do also want to uh, acknowledge the presence here today of our, um, our Safe Corners workers who are out on the streets uh, doing prevention and intervention work all of the time, so say so thank you to all the Safe Corners folks. They are uh, another part of the effort in, in being able to intervene and, and sometimes prevent something from happening before it does, and uh, we appreciate their efforts. I think that when you talk about gun violence, um, you, one of the most compelling groups of people to, to speak to are mothers. And so we're very proud uh, today to be joining us again this year, uh, a group called uh, Moms Demand Action. And uh, representing them, I'd like to invite Kathleen Berry up to make some remarks. Thank you, Mayor Carpenter. A big thank you to you and the staff of the city government of Brockton and all your invited guests especially law enforcement and the local state legislators that are here for your commitment to gun violence prevention. By organizing the proclamation today and the gun buyback program tomorrow, Mayor, you are sending a strong message that um, it is simply unacceptable to have gun violence on our streets and that violence is not the answer to anger or problems, and that we have to be ever uh, vigilant to ensure that um, illegal guns and unsecured guns fall into the hands of the wrong people. The public needs to know that we face a gun violence epidemic in this country that takes the lives of an average of 96 citizens and residents every single day mostly gun suicides and gun homicides. Every day in America, seven children and teens have their lives cut short by gun violence. An additional 40 are shot and survive. Can you imagine the grief that these families and communities face with this kind of situation on a daily basis? And can you imagine the staggering loss of human potential? As a member of Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America, um, I'm very proud. We are the largest grassroots organization in this country working to reduce gun violence. Today and through the weekend, we in the gun violence prevention movement and our millions of supporters are wearing orange. Just as the mayor said, like the hunters, who wear orange to be seen and to stay safe. We want to be seen and we want to stay safe. We are shining a spotlight on this problem. 
We are the mothers and fathers, the students, the young people, the children, and all concerned citizens who yearn for a safer America and a safer Brockton. Um, we can achieve this goal with common sense solutions that nonetheless respect the Second Amendment. And so we simply ask our local, our state, and our federal politicians to put politics aside and to enact evidence-based policies that have been proven to save lives. And equally important, we ask citizens and residents to exercise the utmost responsibility when it comes to owning and handling and safely securing their firearms. In Brockton and across the state, Moms Demand Action is building our outreach and bringing our message to the local communities. Building on the momentum of the mayor's proclamation about a year ago in June, uh, and with the support of your local state legislator delegation, we brought our message to Brockton in November and again in January of 2018, and we look forward to building from there. In conclusion, the bottom line is, we will only solve the gun violence epidemic if enough members of the general public get off the sidelines, stand up, and lend us their voices. Thank you so much for being here today. We appreciate your commitment to gun violence prevention. Thank you, Kathleen. So the, uh, the actual event uh, that we, well, first of all, I want to recognize Ward 6, the City Council, Jack Lally is also here supporting us today. Thank you, Jack, for being here. So I, I, at this time, I'd like to issue uh, the proclamation uh, on behalf of the City of Brockton. I'm gonna use my glasses to make sure I get it right. This proclamation declares June 1st to be National Gun Violence Awareness Day in the City of Brockton to honor and remember all victims and survivors of gun violence and to declare that we as a country must do more to reduce gun violence. Whereas every day 93 Americans are killed by gun violence and more than 200 have sustained non-fatal firearm injuries over the last five years. Whereas Americans are 25 times more likely to be killed with guns than people in other developed countries. Whereas protecting public safety in the communities they serve is mayor's highest responsibility. And whereas support for the Second Amendment rights of law-abiding citizens goes hand in hand with keeping guns away from dangerous people. And whereas mayors and law enforcement officers know their communities best, are the most familiar with local criminal activity and how to address it, and are best positioned to understand how to keep their citizens safe. And whereas anyone can join this campaign by pledging to wear orange today on June 1st, to help us raise awareness about gun violence. And whereas by wearing orange on June 1st, Americans will raise awareness about gun violence and honor the lives and lost human potential of Americans stolen by gun violence. And whereas we renew our commitment to reduce gun violence and pledge to do all we can to keep firearms out of the wrong hands and encourage responsible gun ownership to keep our children safe. Therefore, be it resolved that I, Mayor Bill Carpenter of the City of Brockton, hereby declare June 1st to be National Gun Violence Awareness Day. I encourage all citizens to support our efforts to prevent the tragic effects of gun violence and for us to all honor and value human life. And I would like to uh, ask Kathleen to come up and I'll present the actual official proclamation to Kathleen. All right, I, this is gonna con conclude uh, our program, but I just wanna again say how much I truly appreciate this great turnout that we had here today, all of the orange that we have uh, in City Hall tonight, and please help us spread the word about the gun buyback tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at 15 Nielsen Street. Let's see if we can get some more guns off the streets of the city. Thank you. <laughs>